What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all as you all come in. I'm telling you all, I am thankful to be able to do this live with you all today. Sinus has kicked in. I had smelled some, some perfume or cologne that I was not supposed to smell. It aggravated my sinuses. So dealing with some headaches here or there. It's okay though, because you know what? I think the most important thing is that messages must be shared, not just garbage, but messages that are true, real, and um, that are revealing so that people could be set free. You know, I just accomplished my 28th African country. Yes, I just knocked out Sao Tome, please check out the video, uh, and also uh, Angola. And though I spent just a, a week with each of them, Angola, I'm going back to really interested in Angola. And that's got some things that I really want to knock out there. One is buying a piece of property there. Number two is I really want to delve into really the northern plain of Angola. You know, little did I know really the significance of, or excuse me, not the significance, but well, the significant impact or the devastation by what the Portuguese, their actual part in the slave trade was. You know, typically because we over in the United States of America, we typically think England, Europe, uh, Britain, uh, was those who actually, you know, grabbed us and, you know, took us over to America. And that's far from the truth. You know, they were the ones who purchased. <laughs> but the ones who was doing all the going into the Congo and, and the west of Africa, then selling the slaves over to, like, the French, the Germans, the Spaniards, the Italians, you know, was the Portuguese. That is who, actually, we really need to deep look in Angola because Angola is where majority of the slaves came from. And we have a play. We, we have a connection with this. I know many of y'all are like, what is the big deal, brother? What's the deal? Look, truth will set you free when you understand who you are, where you come from, and really to get you back on track of really the true living God that we were serving before they came and did the switcheroo and gave us this Jesus, gave us this Bible that was used against us when they came and, and found our writings and flipped the script, changed the names, finagled words, changing God's name and, and these things in order to cause us to submit. You know, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the a video tomorrow. Um, the letter from King Leopold II, and how he reached out to the ministries or these missionaries. Excuse me, <laughs> these missionary even ministries is dangerous. Goodness gracious, missionaries who definitely was on the mission to come in first to sell this lie of religion to a people to get them to conform, to submit to it, believe in it. And then the military come in and chain them up, gather them with deals with some African countries and be sold over to a lot of other countries or taken over to other countries as well as slaves. You know, this whole thing, I'm about to show y'all some videos here. Um, it sickens my stomach. It, it brings down my spirit. When I see Africans who bow down to idols, images, who, when the Europeans came, they said, y'all are worshiping idols and, and, and y'all worshiping these idols and things, these statues, and they turn around and gave them pictures and statues to bow down to. Little did they know that many, of course, had idols 
and were worshiping idols. But many had replications of things that were depicting the essence of the Most High. If you said the Most High was a savior, they would create an image. You know, if you said the Most High was powerful, they create an image showing something of strength. Many Europeans could not even understand that, but they took out and turned around and used it and bagged it up, changed the names, wrote their mess up, got into our writings, twisted it up and all that's why you gotta be careful when you walk through scriptures, ancient writings or scrolls because their hands are in it's proven. I've researched that out and you gotta be very spiritually discerning to go through these so-called Torahs. You gotta go through the five books of Moses, the Bible because they did a heck of a job flipping the script and left, let me tell you this right here. The Catholics who Christianity stems out of when people started breaking away from them, whether it was the Protestants, whether it was, you know, the Baptists, whether it was the um, black coats or white coats or whatever you want to call them. All of these religions stemmed out of was breakups out of Catholicism. But the Catholics, those popes, which I will also be doing a video of, of a researcher who broke down how the popes played a heavy part in blessing these so-called Portuguese, Spaniards, Europeans into believing slavery is okay. You can go ahead and do it. Which we know straight from the devil, the evil spirit itself. But let me say this right here. I can't fault people when we believe a lie. I've followed many lies along the years until I had to wake up and had to find out why do I do? Why do I say? Why do I participate? Why do I do in all these behave in these different functions that were actually taught to me? You all need to do the same because when you do the research, which many people just don't want to do the work, you're going to find the truth and it's going to really break up families, sever some relationships, and it's going to even wreck your whole mindset into you, be you behaving totally different, which will ultimately be a greater good for you. I was in Sao Tome. A lot of Catholics there. I went into a Catholic cathedral. And it's hard. It's hard for a brother. You see right here. You see, where am I? Right here. You see back here, uh, this Christ here. Many Africans, Brazilians, Caribbeans worship this image. And what's interesting that I find, because I've been around the whole globe, except for over in China and Asia and the Asian countries and the islands. What I find interesting is where I find the Catholics is where I find the most horrific poverty. These people have been worshiping, bowing down to Mother Mary, Jesus, all these years. Ain't seen not nothing prosper in their life. Only thing they've seen is things still remain the same. And those who think they got something like money or got a house who call themselves Christians, they contribute that to thinking that it's the Jesus that they're serving. When it was nothing more than their own might when it's to getting the money. Because I've said before, if they read their scriptures, Christ said God has nothing to do with money. So who do you worship? Because let me say this, and I'm going to get into this. First and foremost, you see I have here Exodus 20 and 4. Do not make any graven images. Do you not believe how many people don't even read? Especially Africans. 
They don't even carry Bibles. They don't even read Bibles. They don't, they listen to that pastor that's sitting up there and he himself, I've watched so many of these pastors, they are ignorant. They only follow the so-called behaviors of America and think they're doing the same thing. They construct the same churches, same choirs, same mimics, jumping up and down, doing some old hoobie-jooby stuff, acting like they're speaking in spirit. And it's far from the truth because all they don't even read. They don't even research. The only the only history they know is his own story. That is it. When he was born. And some of them don't even know when they're born. Most say it's the first year that most people <laughs> don't even know the date they were born in Africa. This is the truth. Many don't know how old they really are. This is the truth. This is the truth. And yet will follow a history of lies through the religions they follow. Now, I'm not trying to beat up on people in, in that at all, not the people. I'm bringing exposure to the fact that you all need to wake up and realize you are bowing down to the very thing that says the Bible do not even do. So let me give you the scripture because so many ignorant people who even been in church for years have never read the Bible. Exodus 20 and four, and I'm gonna get to the video. I was in Angola and to my amazement, when I walked in this two women was bowing down to these white statues. You saw the picture on my thumbnail, this black young man praying to the idols, an idol image when it was told the first commandment, do not, let's get into it. Here's the first commandment. First it says is right here, let me go to two. I am the Lord. It says thy God. That's a European name. I am thy Lord, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt or the place of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. That's what it says. Out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So anytime something you hear about Egypt or whatever, think about out of bondage. Thou shall not have no other lords before me. It says gods here, but it's lords. Thou shall not make unto you any graven image. Now listen to this. This is where people miss out on. And I want many of you all who profess to be Hebrews and Israelites and claim to be uh, uh, followers and chosen ones and children of Israel's. Many of you all even have pictures and images of black Jesus hanging on y'all walls. Having these images, these pictures, these, uh, these statues, and these, these crosses, this says, you shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. Where's the most high at? Where's the Lord at? We bouncing around, spinning around in heaven. So you shouldn't have anything dealing with those things that are in heaven. You shouldn't grave, make any graven images. No, listen to this, because this is the ignorance of our people. And I want y'all to share this video. Share it through, oh, I don't care, just share it. Find somebody, find, get a pen pal. We need to do pen pals again. Just find an African, find a Brazilian, and just send them the video. Just go on YouTube and click open Brazilian, uh, uh, Brazil videos, and then, uh, uh, Get this link, copy it, and just put it in their latest post. Because what that's going to do is they're going to look at it, and then they're going to say, what is this link this person sending me? And then they get to see this. Listen to this, y'all. This is how good the Most High is. I stumbled upon how to do closed captions in other languages, how to put them on my videos. My last video I just did, I got, I'm hitting them Portuguese people. I'm hitting Brazil. I hit Angola. I hit um, um, all the Portuguese speaking countries that our people are at so that now they hear what I'm saying. They can read it. They know now because a lot of their people are trapped and stuck in their countries. They can't venture out. They can't afford to do research. They can't go speak to other places. They don't know the history of slavery. They don't know none of this stuff. All they know is bow down to that Jesus. Bowing down and worshiping that Mary. That's all they know. You know what's so interesting is that the scripture says that the Yeshua, 
the spirit shall return unto the earth when the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is 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 taught from the four corners of the earth now here's the problem because many of y'all have asked the question well it said that scripture but why haven't christ returned yet all these years because they haven't preached they haven't taught the kingdom of heaven to the four corners of the earth. Why does it say to the four corners of the earth? Because it says that's where the children were scattered. The four corners, the children must be awakened. This is why you all, Yeshua said, I did not come, but not to speak to anybody else. I, I was only sent, but to the children, the lost sheep of the children of Israel. And he gave his disciples the commandment to go spread the gospel don't go to the sumerians do not go to the to the gentiles you go to the children of israel now hold up if the children of israel are real up there where palestine land is and they got their own nation they all gather together Somebody lying, somebody lying, but no, this must be spread because our, the children, do you not know, and I'm going to get further into the other videos is coming, y'all, it's coming, that the majority of the slaves, to include us who wound up in America, came out of Angola, Congo area. Yes, there were those came out of the Western coast, but the Western coast don't think we think it's the coastal lands that they were just grabbing people. No. You see, some of the African kingdoms, they already knew they participated in the slavery. They went into the interior. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. They went into the interior. Who's in the interior? Who was scattered about? You don't go get your own people. It's just like right now, if slavery, if, if them Europeans came right now today and came on the shores of Africa to Ghana and they said, look, we'll pay y'all a thousand dollars for slavery. Any person you bring here, who do you think they coming for? I ain't part of their family. Not in the way of the, how they see it. They're going to look out for their own. Now, I know I hear somebody say, but go black. Why are you in Africa? Because I look. I despise damn Erica so bad. <laughs> Put the D in front of America, capitalize the E, damn Erica so bad that the chosen land that was given me by the most high, I am ordered, my steps have been ordered to come into this land. It's the origin of man, it's the beginning. But yet the Africans are waking up too because out of their ignorance, they didn't have no idea of what was transpiring. Let's get into this commandment real quick. Thou shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Because if you look at pictures right now and you see they make the devil and hell and they make it seem like people are down there in hell. And, and he, come on, y'all seen those pictures before. Or that is in the water underneath the earth. You've seen those pictures before when they had the, they had the pitchforks of these so-called ghosts and goblins and, and the devils and all this and the dark deep seas and all that right there. Or so supposedly Yeshua's uh, leading the captive free out of the depths of the sea. All of these images, it says, do not make any of these graven images or any likeness, anything that is in heaven. Above or that is in earth, beneath or that is in water, under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them. Huh? What? I'm going to say that again because, see, some most of y'all, I'm going to say it slow because when I put the closed caption for other languages to hear this, they must understand this, that you read your Bible, find your Bible, research it. If you ain't got one, you better beat down somebody's door to go get it because you're going to find that you are following a lie. You're following a, a, a religion that told you to bow down to something that looks like a white European and you think God is white and now you have been submissive to them. Your children's children, your great grandparents, your mamas, your great grandparents, all of them been sitting around here worshiping a white man and yet you ain't got nowhere 
but stuck in poverty, living in hoods, crime infested, and you ain't seen nothing good come out from generations and generations because you haven't got the word yet. Now, here we go. You shall not bow down yourselves to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous Lord. What does that mean, jealous? I remember the word jealous. Oprah Winfrey got tripped over it, and she said she couldn't believe no God because how could a God be jealous? She don't have an understanding of what jealous means. This is the creator who has created you. Why would you want one that you've created to bow down to wood, metal, gold, anything made by the hands that moths, thieves, and robbers can come and take that you've got to build another one? Why would you put energy into or, or a faith into something that man made? Listen to this. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God, it says, visiting the iniquities of the fathers, visiting the sins of the fathers, visiting the, the, the wrongdoings of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations, them that hate me. You got to understand. This was, we were a stiff necked people. We were a hard head people. And what happened? We, our forefathers, lost the faith, and began to follow other gods. They were teaching their own children to hate the Most High because they didn't get their way. They were so comfortable being in slavery, in bondage, in Egypt, that when they had to go on a journey through Africa, the center of Africa, to be dispersed because the enemies came because they, us the children, begin to follow and worship the other gods where the enemies begin to overtake us. Then all of a sudden, then we had to flee. But it wasn't over, though. It wasn't over. See, that was back then. Then you had nations come into the center, the Arabs, the Arab slave trade, or they call it the Sahara, the Sahara slave trade, that the Muslims came in and took many Africans. They said millions of Africans out of Africa. And they went into the interior of Africa and took millions out. Guess who got the word? Portuguese. The Portuguese, the Portuguese got the word about the slave trade. Somehow the word got spread, and then they looked into it, started doing trading, went to the coast of Africa where the Moors were up there in Morocco area. It's called Morocco now, but it was Moors nations. And they went in getting in good with them, trading with them, wind up enslaving some, bringing some, taking them back to their country, which then they further went down the west coast of Africa seeking friendships of trading, befriending kings, getting in good with them because they knew that there was these people that are not just like the average Africans out here, but they are strangers in the land, but they were cool amongst the other kingdoms. You know, they didn't hurt nobody. They didn't bother nobody. It was minding their own business. But when the trading, instead of trinkets and you're getting trinkets and it was like, now we can give you more and we can give you other things if you give us people. And of course, what do you think the Africans did? Went in there to go get the other Africans from the 12 tribes of Israel. And they then, and they sold some of their people too. Yes, those who either owe debt, those who either committed crimes and those who um, uh, um, who was in debt, who on crime, who did crimes, or uh, uh, was prisoners of war. This was the history of showing. So Portugal wound up going through and landing in Angola of all places. Now, what's interesting, and shout out to my brother, uh, Michael. 
out in Angola who showed me around. Um, check out his channel. Uh, his his channel name is uh, Prophet Michael. Um, I think it's Prophet Michael or something. I'll put it in the description. can't remember. Too much of my mind. But anyway. So anyway. Our forefathers hated God or the Most High. And by this is what the Lord is saying that the iniquities of the fathers upon the children on the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This is the whole gist, y'all, when it comes to the Bible in a nutshell, is that who can have faith in the most high and live upright? Upright is nothing more than the commandments. And all the commandments stand on love God with thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and Love thy neighbor. Having a heart of love for thy neighbor. That is where all of the laws, commandments fall on and hang on with the prophets. This is why I say them people who got the name prophets, which, of course, means seer. People always looking for other prophets out here. It's already been said. Ain't no more can be done. Look, the prophets had turned corrupt. They didn't even follow the most high and all that the Lord was wanting was people just to believe. And all of these acts by the hand of the most high, by showing the power that is, there were still those who still just didn't believe. But. It goes on and you need to read it by now. Don't take the Lord's name in vain and all these other things. But I wanted to read that real quickly before I get to this video, because of the fact that many of you all are worshiping graven images of things that are in heaven and beneath the sea and in the earth. Y'all got them on your walls. You probably got them in your cars. You got them on wherever. I see it all in Africa, especially here in Ghana. The white Jesus is everywhere on all the mobiles and in cars, on churches, on billboards. And somebody's got to stand up and say, we tired of being cursed. We got to get back to the true word of what it says. We can't be bound down to these images because the Europeans came and put this in our hand. Who is this white Jesus? They gave you Jesus in, in the place of Yeshua. Gave you that. Let's get into this right here. I want to show you this right here because it hurt me. I've seen it in South America. You know, when you see people who look more white and you see them in Catholic churches and you see them right there, and you know, like, you know, yeah, y'all just don't know what y'all up to. But when you see your own people bowing down to images and White images, I don't care if they were black images because there are people bow down to black images too. But it destroys my heart or my hope for them. And let me see here, hold one second. Let me uh, pull this up here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, y all, y all, y all, look. This is what our brothers and sisters are doing. I was in Angola. I was in Angola and I was at the military museum. They had a depiction, some pictures of when the Europeans came in and they brought in Christianity and, and Catholicism. And um, I did a video and I looked for the video of that right there because I was in there talking and stuff right there. But I want to show you all this. On this, on the other side of the of the building, there's this cathedral, very small room cathedral, and the African Angolans. And I hope y'all will watch this and listen to this and share this. I walk in, didn't even know it was in, in the room until I got there. I said, "Oh my God, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna videotape this." This is what brothers and sisters in the Catholic faith are doing even in the Christian faith are doing in Africa, in Brazil, in South America, in the Caribbean, in America, around the globe. Check this out. Let me share my video. Oh, that's right. I got to remember too how to do this. Because um, I don't want to, I want to make sure that y'all can uh, hear this. Uh, let's see here. I got to share my, 
Okay, let me let me pull this up here real quick. Let me turn on my live here to make sure that I can see. Do y'all see and hear what I'm saying? Um, okay. All right. Some really let me make sure. Uh, really let me make sure. Uh, Okay, I can hear myself on this. Let me go ahead and share this. Okay. Make sure I hear myself. Okay. All right. All right now. So I want you all to see this. I happen to stumble upon this. This was in an old fort 1,500 years ago, but in here they have a small cathedral. But I want y'all to see this. She's talking to these statues, praying to it. This is the Africans. This is the Brazilians. This is the Caribbeans. This is the Americans. Black Americans, Black Caribbeans, Black Brazilians. You all are worshiping these idols. And I just read to you what it said as far as an exodus. You should not make any graven images. When the Europeans made these images and gave them over to you, I had to stop it, y'all. She got up. I said, uh-oh, let me go ahead and shut it off. Hide my camera. But this is what... This is what and why Africa is suffering. This is why Brazil is the poorest, one of the poorest right along with Africa, the poorest of the poorest. Every place I find a cathedral, Catholicism, it's the most porous, ran down, trashiest place I've ever seen in, in all the workplaces I travel. Now, I'm not trying to beat up y'all who are Catholics, but just let's be real. These statues ain't got you nowhere. When I broke away from Christianity, my life prospered grand. My life, my, my, my mindset, my spirit. These people right here are lost brothers and sisters. Right here are lost brothers and sisters who does these acts are getting nowhere and we need to spread the message. We need to let them know what you are doing is against what the Most High said you should be doing. Look at this Europeans, these statues. This black folk who got black gods, black Jesus. This is what, this is why We've gotten so far away from the true living most high that we wonder why we suffer. And what the Europeans crafted, craftily did was come in and trade it, traded these images for the sake of people. That many of them thought they were getting a God that would do them right and turn around and sold their own people. This is the problem why Africa struggles because these idols ain't giving you no answers. They're not telling you how to shake the fleas of these European fleas off your back. They're not trying to check, you know, the most high is not giving you the, the words of wisdom. That's his commandments, laws and statutes in order for you to be able to be able to rid, rid them off. All of y'all Christians out here claiming that you, oh, believe in Jesus and Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus. Look, you got the wrong concept. See, what they did was they turn around and gave you a white man. When Yeshua is 
the Most High, the Savior of the world, the Lord. It said it in the old. What, see, when they brought in the New Testament, it was nothing more than a sly hand of inclusion. How is it that Yeshua was speaking about going to the ch lost children of Israel and told his disciples to do the same? Okay, okay, let me do this because, see, many of you all are, okay, he's just saying, okay. Um, listen, it's right here. Because some people sometimes want, you know, to hear this, and I know I keep forgetting. There are people I want to make sure because there's people who are leaning on their Bibles. They haven't received the spirit to be able to have it written on their hearts. It's there, but they don't understand this. These 12 Yeshua sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now, I've already explained to you all, if you read over in, in uh, Genesis, when it talks about Noah's three sons, we already know Jepheth, who was considered to be the albino or the white, well, light skinned one or whatever, who was the so-called went to the north. They, it says that they were those of the Isles of the Gentiles. They're the Gentiles. But, but us who are coming from Shem, we're of coming out of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, on down to the 12 tribes of Israel. We know that we had Ham too as well as one of the sons. All were blessed if they would follow the Lord but all of them turn around and follow false gods. But listen to this, though. This is quite interesting. Yeshua said, he, these 12 Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, go not into the ways of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, any you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, Preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if you know anything, that at hand means at hand is that the kingdom of heaven is within you. <sighs> okay. I know I got many that are not astute. So sometimes I got to remember that, you know, um, So, hold on a second. Uh, come on now, come on now, come on now. Okay. All right, try to get this thing in order. Uh, let's see here. Luke 17, 21. Uh, let's see here. 21. Okay, here we go right here. Let's go to 20. And when he was dem demanded of the Pharisees, when the king... When the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. You got to remember this now because <laughs> people keep thinking that I'm waiting for the Jesus to come, waiting for the Jesus to come, waiting for the Jesus to come. There is a part of a reality and a part of a spirituality in saying that. Neither say, th neither shall they say, look here or look over there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, now, my brothers and sisters, let me say this to you all right here. We have the power that has written in our spirit. And all we have to do is rise up and stand on what is the righteousness of the Most High. 
All these idols, all of this money given as tithes, all of this shouting and dancing and praise, uh, this supposed, supposed praising, all of these th the uh, theatrics that they have put upon you, they did in the Old Testament. The Most High said, look, I want to vomit all of spew this out on you. You're making me sick. All of this mess that you do, your 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 sacrifices, your givings, your tithes, your all of this stuff means nothing because you're filthy. You're evil. You don't even stand up and represent me. And we got people bowing down to these idols made from man's hands and poor as dirt, poor in spirit, poor in everything. Let me go ahead and bring it to you right now. I was going to wait this for, I'm going to do a, I'll do a separate video, but I'm going to show y'all because y'all in here, this is a bonus to you all. Let me show y'all the letter, the, the, the attack by the missionaries. That's why I told you all, look, the Lord showed me this years ago. The missionaries are spies. That's all they are. And Africa needs to kick every last one of them out. I love when Paul Kagame kicked all the churches. Nope, we ain't doing with none of them churches, them religions, none of that stuff. No, get them out of here. No, they're corrupting our people. The only African country who's done that, Rwanda. But we need to understand it's a ploy, a plot, a scheme. It is nothing more than a spy house. They are the eyes and the ears, and they report back what is going on to the countries that colonize the African country. And to this day, they still have the ears and the eyes. And y'all silly Africans and you silly brothers and sisters out here who call them your friends. Now, I'm not saying all are evil and stuff like that. I'm talking about those who think that you think you're doing business deals with. Those who you think are looking out for your own good. Those that talking about they praying for you and they doing good for you and they all this right here for you. See, this is why the Catholics have it where you can go confess your sins to their fathers. Look, let me read this right here because many of y'all who are Catholics don't even know this. Y'all call y'all priests fathers. And in the Bible, it says, call no man father. You only have one that is your father. That's the heavenly, the most high. I, the Catholics break so many of what is in the scriptures, the scrolls, the ancient writings, y'all call it the Bible, that I'm surprised that so many ignorant people don't even read to know the truth. If I can use the Bible against itself, because it's, it's a lot of lies that have been planted in there by these people. You got to be careful in that, navigating through that, because a lot's been taken out and a lot's been added in. And many people, will not, those people who will, not, they claim they are ministers and pastors and bishops, but they won't tell you the truth. Yeah, this has been touched by those Europeans and they, they have taken out apocryphas and they have added in words and added in other things into the scriptures that, yes, you don't know what may be the truth or not. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let me give it to you because I know we got, we're going to be having a lot of our brothers and sisters from Angola, Brazil, and the Portuguese speaking places because I got the closed caption now, y'all. I'm putting the other languages on here. These people, we, they are looking for help. They are living in, I'm talking about, the religion has had their knee on their neck all these years with these false gods and these idols. Suffering. Suffering. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Uh, Hold up. This is in the later part of 820. Let's see. 
Oh boy, somebody help me. I know we got scholars out here. What it says, do not call any man father. Meaning, meaning, meaning those that are supposedly these high priests, you don't never refer to them as fathers. It is, I'm coming close to it. Let's see, somebody go ahead and give that to me while I'm looking here. Um, I didn't got so excited here to, to, to even bring this forth. Um, it's in Matthews. Matthew 23 and nine. Okay, let's see what we got here. 23 and nine. Okay. Oh, well, thank you, prophet, prophet, a <laughs> prophet of Yah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 23 9. But be not you called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ as all you are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Need to be you called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Ain't that funny? Interesting. Matthews 23 and 9. I, you know, I, this this the whole chapter 23, I really enjoyed because it he blasts all of these religious folks. Blast them. But how now see these were the Europeans that pushed Christ, Christianity and, and they were slave owners, and we had to call them masters. And to this day, people are calling people masters. You see. When they say that you got your master's degree, this was when they was the highest they, that they would reach in, uh, in, in their education as though they were above everybody. Grandmaster, you know, of the, of the Masonic Lodge or, you know, these words of masters was a, a sense of you submitting to them as that they're a higher power, power like the most high. See, they flipped the script. Yeah, they turned it around, My Miranda. They, they flipped the script. And here our people are suffering because we are worshiping these idols, these images. Take them down, rip them, throw them away, take the crosses off. You got to get rid of that stuff so that you stand true on your faith and your belief in the true living spirit, God that is, or the most high that there is, so that your life can never be the same. You will see things begin to transpire for a better because you're removing the very images that are in the way of you in the relationship with the most high. While Africa sits back in, in the, the richest continent in the world, but the poorest people on earth to include Brazil. And black folks always suffer 10 times worse than white people. Why don't that tell you something? When you're supposed to be the representation, the image of and supposed to be the teachers of the world, we turn around and we are the students and following their every move, doing exactly what they tell us to do. Look at these jokers behind me. I know they only do it out of ignorance. They were taught by those who taught them, who taught by them, and they don't even have the means of education. They don't have the means to resources. They don't have the means to move outside of their small little village to know the truth. They themselves don't even read the scripture scrolls, the ancient writings. You call it the Bible. They don't even have the spirit to know how to navigate through the garbage that them Europeans put in there. Let me give you the bonus I said. Um, boy, did I get rid of it? Here we go. Here we go. Let's show you what the what the what what King Leopold II said, confessed, and exposed about these missionaries. 
I looked everywhere to try to debunk this letter. This letter has been said, it, this, they have said that this letter was found by one, an African within the Congo, uh, a letters uh, um, and was brought forth. Uh, of course, the Europeans want to say they can't leg uh, legitimize it, but this is the one who killed 10 million Africans in the Congo, chopped off hands and feet. Why the center of Africa? You got to ask yourself the question. There again, 10 million Africans, who were these people? Killed, arms cut off legs cut off because they didn't produce the amount of, of, of sugar cane or whatever it was that they were cultivating. You had to produce a certain amount. If you didn't, you get your hand cut off. Y'all have seen the pictures plenty of times of, the, of those children's hands cut off, men and women's hands and legs cut off. This guy was the evil of, of the evils. Even the Europeans said this, look, Hitler has nothing on this guy. And this all was done in the center of the motherland. And why did the Europeans go to get these Africans, chosen ones, in the center of the interior of Africa? Hmm, very interesting. You see, there was about 5 million sent to the Caribbeans and, and South and Brazil. About 400,000 only went to America, United States. You should be jumping up for joy. That we're closing in and finding the truth of where we're stemming. Closing in. Let me share my screen. All righty here, which one was that? The letter. I want y'all to get this right here. You gotta share this too. Listen to this right here. This right here is King Leopold II of Belgium. The African Globe, they, 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 uh, below is a letter written in 1883 by King Leopold II of Belgium to Belgian Christian missionaries being sent to Congo. These Christian missionaries would eventually become the spearhead of Belgium. Let me make sure y'all hear me. Okay, I don't think y'all hear me. Okay, I don't think y'all hear me. Oh, you do hear me, okay. Okay. Now you do. I don't think you Let me try me. this again. Oh, you do hear me, okay. Okay, now you do. I don't think Let me try this again. All right, um, we're going to read this letter here. All right, um, we're going to read this letter here. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay, can y'all hear me? All right, good, you can hear me. All right. So it reads this right here. Let me put this up so y'all can read it. This, this is from the most evilest man they said worse than Hitler. This is what he sent to the, to, the, to, the, to the missionaries. Reverends, fathers, and dear compatriots, the task that is given to fulfill is very delicate and requires much tact. You will go certainly to evangelize. But your evangelization must inspire above all Belgian interests. Your principal objective in our mission in the Congo is never to teach the Nigga to know God. This they know already. They speak and submit to a Nzung, uh, Mungu, one in Zambi, one in, in Zankomba, and what else? I don't know. You see, let me just pause right there. We already knew the most high. 
But he knew this, this right here is in 1883. This is 200 years after, almost 300, 300 years. This, this, he's 300 years after uh, the beginning of what we would call the transatlantic slave trade. He's just reciting what was going on in other the other uh, the continent as a whole. It just so happened this was the Berlin Conference. This is when they divided up Africa in 1882 uh, or something like that. And each country had their own, they developed their own country. So he wanted the missionaries to come in and do their work on them because they weren't colonized already. It was that a lot of the Europeans came in to take a lot of the Africans out of the central of Congo, out of the interiors of Africa. And it, you know, and when I say Congo, you don't think Congo is just the country that you see today. It was vast. And it had in just like Ethiopia went from the east to the west of Africa. And Atlanta, Atlanta Ocean was actually called the Ethiopia uh, Ocean. So do not get fooled by what you see by the map today that these countries ever existed. They did not exist. You had African kingdoms, you had, you had uh, uh, territories, and you had places to where we just did not know those exact names. Some of the older maps show that I've been showing you all. But listen, he is now, because they just took over Congo, Just the, he's been in the first leader of the pack for this carving up of Africa, now he's sending the missionaries in before he sends in the troops. He says, they know that to kill, to sleep with someone else's wife, to lie and to insult is bad. Have courage to admit it. You are not going to teach them what they know already. Your essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrials, which means you will go to interpret the gospel in the way it will be the best to protect your interests in that part of the world. For these things, you have to keep watch on disinteresting our savages from the richness that is plenty in their underground to avoid that, they get interested in it and make you murderous comp competition and dream one day to overthrow you. So he has just laid out what they need to be cautious of and how their approach should be, that they should use this gospel in a way to protect their own interests. You got to make sure that they don't become disinterested that he called them savages, that, the, that they must avoid, that they get interested and that they have this dream of one day to overthrow you if they become, you know, uh, uh, of interest of being empowered. Listen to this right here. Your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find text ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty. Now listen to this. Your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find text ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty. Like happier are the poor because they will inherit the heaven. This is a quote. That's a scripture. And it's very difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. That's also another quote out of the scripture. He wanted them to hit this home, drive it in. You have to detach from them and make them disrespect everything which gives courage to affront us. I make reference to their mystic system and their war fetish, warfare, warfare protection, which they pretend not to want to abandon. And you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. Now, hold the hell up. You see, when I was... I just did a video with me and my brother live for Angola, and we were talking about the so-called um, powers of the universe, the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. It's scripture. 
that th th there is a power that you can use in order to use against enemies. But they knew they could not win this. This is how Haiti won their independence. The only ones to win their independence was the Hades. And the Europeans said they used witchcraft. They didn't use witchcraft. They used a warfare protection, which he says was a mystic system. He said, which they pretend not to want to abandon. And you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. You see, People get afraid because they have already put indoctrinated us believing that oh, Africa, they was up here doing voodoos and, and up here this and that. And look, you got groups out here who do all kind of stuff. Look, look at the, the Europeans. They bow down to a statue called Mary and say she's the mother of God. You got India and them. They got their they got their idols. They worship their cows. You got all. I'm, I, look, I'm not trying to hit on and bang on anybody's. On, on anybody's religion, but this whole world's bowing down to idols, but we were supposed to be the only ones not to do, go that route and bow, to, bow down to anything made of the man's hands. Everybody else let them do what they want to do, but we as a people, because even you find us in India, we find the poorest, the dirt poorest of the poorest. Being a people who comes from the root of the children of Israel is going to suffer. But listen to this. Your actions. Well, let me back up some. So it says, I make reference to their mystic system and their war fetish, war for, warfare protection, which they pretend not to want to abandon. And you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. Your actions will be directed essentially to the younger ones, for they won't revolt when the recommendation of the priest is contradictory to their parents' teaching. Now, hold the heck. Up. I've said this a million times. That's why Africa needs to stop Western world's media, movies and music coming in feeding the youth because we already know that's in the United States, already know what the turnout's going to be. Ghana slowly turning that route already. Some of these Western worlds who listen to and follows America, they're falling by the wayside. You're going to see their youth change and the evils that be. But he's saying that if you can get to the youth and find them, uh, they won't revolt when the recommendations of the priest is contradicted to their parents' teachings. You see, Africans, this is the sad part today. And I'm keeping a real name, but everybody can agree with me. You can pay an African a dollar. And he'll do something for you. Pay him $10. He'll do something and probably question, should he do it? You pay him $100. He probably won't even think about it and just go do it and cross his moral value. All for the sake of money. Now, we know not just Africans do that. We know the world does that. But I'm speaking only of Africa because I know that here in the motherland, there's a sickness that still is reigning. And yet we can rise up out of the sickness because, see, these Europeans come in paying them the money, paying them the money to sit here and do fictitious videos. And then we are still enough to watch them, give them all these views and they make all this money. Oh, yeah. I was forced to marry an African bride. They forced me. I almost got my life taken care of from. They surrounded me. And then he'd go pay them $2 each to act like they're attacking him or something. Or they make these old lying videos that, you know, make the Africans look foolish. But the priest in them, what they did was they told the villagers and the chiefs, we're going to go ahead and build your, 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 your students, or your, your, your kids schools some raggedy old ass building to go ahead and they can have a school. But not only that, we're going to teach them. And you think you're getting higher education. This is why everybody's trying to reach for the daggone European education, thinking your, your children are learning something, but little do you know they're being indoctrinated into a mindset that they're going to always worship them. And they're always going to want to go over there to work and always get what they got and forget who they are. And they're going to worship their gods. Isn't that what we did? 
Listen, this right here. The children have to learn to obey what the missionaries recommend. Who is the father of their soul? You see, this is why the Catholics have it that you can go into the little box and confess your sins to their father. They call it father. That was the means of them spying. As the people came to report the sins they did. Oh, father, I was thinking about hurting one of the masters out here and all that there. Or, you know, father, there are some other ones out here who's going to do harm to the rest of the people. Oh, forgive them, father. See, these were spies. And it still happens to this day. Y'all go into their churches, you go to the cathedrals, and you are behaving in the fashions outside of what you would call. You are bowing down to a false, fake God. Name was never God. And yet these missionaries come in acting like we're coming to help. We're coming to clean. I've already did a video of a missionary that, that exposed the lies that they were doing, coming in, making all this money from volunteers, from money from around the world, going into villages, acting like they're helping and cleaning up, and then they giving, give the little dog to a little girl, take a picture photo, take it away from her, go give it to somebody else, take it away from them, just doing photo ops. And then posting it out there like they're doing work. These missionaries are devils. But, but, but they do good things though. I mean, they come in and they're helping and they're feeding some of the people. Oh, what you can't feed yourself. You can't do for yourself, you African, you lazy African-American, you lazy Brazilian. You've been sitting on your tail for so long with your hand out, expecting something from them when you need to get off your tail and go do for you in the community. Listen to this. This is what he wrote. The children have to learn to obey what the missionaries recommend, who is the father of their soul. He said the missionaries are the father of their souls. You must singularly insist on their total submission and obedience. Avoid developing the spirit in the schools. Teach students to read and not to reason. Ain't that still today? I run across so many of my brothers and sisters out here. Um, I blow my mind. I'm like, you, you mean to tell me you don't? You don't see what you're doing is an error. You can't reason that through right there. This, what was I at? Today that happened. Last night it happened. I'm at the grocery store. I'm at the grocery store and I bought me some granola. I buy the granola and I go to the cash register. The, the woman tries to use the barcode. Blip, it doesn't go. Blip, it doesn't go. Blip, it doesn't go. She gives it to the guy, tells him he should go over there to go find out what the price of it is. I see him walk in a total different direction than where I got it. So I said, come on, let's, and I showed him where it was. We go over there. He goes, look down at it. He sees the price. He sees the price on it, and he comes back. And I said, yeah. So she goes through the computer. To see, can she find the brand? Because the price of it, she's unsure of that. What she's seeing on the computer, which is this, the identical. I said, sister, right here. This is it. Oh no, but but the but the price on the on the on the on the shelf says this, and and, and it says that it's made by Kellogg. But this isn't Kellogg. I know. Look right here on your screen. It's saying, look at the name. It says this. Look right here. It says granola. Look right here. It says 300 grams. It matches. This is it. Yes, but the sign on the shelf says uh, Kellogg. And it's... See, reason. Can you think something through? A lot of us have problems with that. Our children today in America has a huge problem with this. So they, he told these missionaries to teach the students to read, but not to reason. Don't think things through. Don't think about it. Don't try to analyze. Listen to what he said next. There, dear patriots, are some of the principles that you must apply. You will find many other books which will be given to you at the end of this conference. He is in the Berlin conference, y'all. He's already know, he's preparing the missionaries to go in. We got our piece of the pie in Africa. So get yourselves ready missionaries because we got to go in. And these are things that you need to do. And once you do that, 
I'm coming in because he was a so-called militant military guy. He was going to force them to do slave labor in the in the in 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 cultivating sugarcane and and all other type of agriculture. He is the one that chopped off the hands and all. Look him up, King Leopold II of Belgium. This joker here. Let's continue with his letter because this is profound. Evangelize the nigga so that they stay forever in submission to the white colonists, colonialists, or colonial colonialists. Oh, I can't say that. So they never revolt against the restraints that are undergoing. Recite every day. Happy are those who are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. A scripture. The letter which follows is courtesy of Dr. Vera Nobles and Dr. Chedazi Okora. Letter from King Leopold III, second of Belgium uh, to colonial missionaries. This is what they had said. Convert always the blacks by using the whip. Keep their women in nine months of submission to work freely for us. Force them to pay you in sign of recognition goats, chickens, or eggs every time you visit their villages. And make sure that niggas never become rich. Sing every day that it is impossible for the rich to enter the heaven. Make them pay taxes each week at Sunday mass. Use the money supposed for the poor to build flourishing business centers. Institute a confessional system. Here goes that confession. They're spies, y'all, which allows you to be good detectives denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of the decision maker. Teach the nigga to forget their heroes and to adore only ours. Never present a chair to a black that comes to visit you. Don't give him more than one cigarette. Never invite him for dinner, even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive at his house. You know what's so funny that I chuckle at that? I was in... I was in Sao Tome two weeks ago. I happened to, I was introduced to a brother that works in the Nigerian uh, embassy. And we started talking and I asked him, has he ever been in America? He says, no, not yet. And he says, I see, well, you've been in Europe. Where, where have you been? You know, he says, well, I've been a few places over. I've been, I think he said been to England or someplace like that. He says, yeah, but my friends haven't invited me yet over to America. I said, your friends? I said, they're white? He said, yeah. I said, oh, you can forget that. How long have they been your friends? Oh, for years. He said, every time that, you know, that it seems like I'm about to go, if something happens and I, I'm unable to go, if something happens with them, I'm unable to go. I said, brother, let me tell you this. They will never invite you. You are black in their eyesight. You are not their friend, and we got to stop calling them our friend. This is the hangup that we got. We need to understand there is a difference between associates. You can have associates. Colleagues. You can have your, 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 um, your uh, employees. But to call somebody your friend... And for years, he's been 24 years working in Nigeria, right next to the ambassador, the ambassador's right hand man. And he said he's never been invited. For years, he's known these people who are delegates, never invited him. That's why I chuckled at this right here. Let's see, keep reading. Never invite him for dinner even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive at his house. The above speech, which, quote, the above speech, which shows the real intention of the Christian missionary journey in Africa, was exposed to the world by Mr. Makwani Mokwani Bukoko, born in the Congo in 1915, and who in 1935, while working in the Congo, bought a secondhand Bible from a Belgian priest who forgot the speech in the Bible, Dr. Chedozi Okoro. 
Africans should know, I say any person should know, that all missionaries carried out and still carry out the mandate. We are only lucky to have found King Leopold's articulation of the at the aim of all Christian imperialist missionaries to Africa. Even the African converts who today manage the old churches in Africa, the priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, etc., of the Roman and Protestant, Protestant sects, and especially also those who are evangelized, born again Christianity, still serve the same mandate, which is why they demon, demonize African gods and anglicize African names and drop the names of African deities, which form parts of African names and still attack and de demolish the African shrines that have managed to survive, e.g. Okijia. Number three, those Africans who voluntarily converted to Christianity before the colonial conquest, such as Alfonso I of the Bakongo in the 15th century, probably did not discern the purpose of the brand of Christianity that was supplied to them, which was probably why they fell easy prey to the missionaries and the white traders and pirates who followed them. But their Japanese counterparts probably did discern the game even without access to some versions of Leopold's letter. But even if the Japanese shoguns did not intuit what Leopold makes explicit, they clearly realized the danger of Japanese converts to Christianity forming a fifth column within Japanese societies and state, a fifth column loyal to their own, to their co-religious re religionists in Europe. So that is that right there. That's a letter right there that was written. And, you know, I believe every, every church in Africa, Brazil, America, Asia, everywhere we are, need to understand what has transpired and what has been perpetuated over generation after generation after generation of the lie that has been told. So please share this video. Please share this video because I think it's that much important for us to bring awareness to people so that they will come out of the stupor, come out of the sleep, come out of the ignorance that they are doing, bowing down to these graven images, worshiping in these fashions that they only picked up from a Western world. These Christianity churches, their makeups with their choirs and their, 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 their sermons and all this stuff comes out of fake religion. All the Most High said is that is to read the commandments unto the generations so they understand what is right. And to believe in the true living, the Most High. That was it. That was that simple. You can't get no simpler than that. They want to complicate it now. They throw all this other stuff in here. Oh, you got to speak with tongues and you got to be baptized and you got to be, you got to, you, 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 you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't say this. You can't say that. You can't wear this. You can't wear that. You can't. And, well, what was the purpose of Christ then? If that, if I thought that that we were Christ. We, see, so much confusion when the main focus was there is only one true living father and that is that which is in the heavens and that kingdom is within you and that when you take on the mindset the spirit you become empowered because it's already written within you with that family this is your man not your boy bringing you another gold nugget that you can either pick up or you can just kick it aside peace and blessings to each and every one of you all until next time I, I send love, peace, and joy by the Almighty to you. I'm out.